after a gap of five years, when the emerging markets trail the developed markets, we think that this is going to be the banner year for the emerging markets. We expect a, about a 10 to 15% return in dollar terms. And multiple things are going to help it. We have a reflation trade. We have China, uh, PMI is looking very strong. India is looking through in the political process in the right position. All things together, we think this is going to be a great year for the emerging markets. Brightest spot of all is China for this year. And primarily because after a gap of five years, China's inflation numbers or its PPI became positive. What does that mean? It means that you will get a nominal GDP growth coming from that inflation. On top of that, China is getting its act straight in the infrastructure spending with one belt, one road. And you see that is what is causing the demand of the commodities. That spills over into the uh, reflation trades coming primarily from the LATAM countries, Russia and uh, South Africa and so forth. The risk which you should consider about is any risk which might come from any policy risk or political risk which can start originate from the developed markets. The policy risk is the biggest risk which is uh, faces the in front of the emerging markets. Now, the risk in coming from the US can be from Mr. Donald Trump uh, emanating new laws which actually hurts the export orientation of the, uh, of the emerging markets. It hurts uh, in terms of a strong dollar. Now European politics in certain ways will be beneficial to emerging markets primarily because European uh, politics will create an uncertainty on Euro which will cause a risk aversion on the Eurozone which will actually cause a flight uh, of capital into the emerging markets and US. So Europe policy risk is not something we are very concerned about. It's the US policy risk is what we are focused on as the biggest risk. The key things about the investment process is that it is all based on behavioral finance. Human mind is irrational. It has been irrational for 5,000 years and poses no change uh, or risk of ch any change anytime soon. Now what our investment process does is that it actually use a quantified model to identify this irrational behavior and how it causes mispricing of the stocks. What it does for you is it actually builds you a source of alpha or return which is completely uncorrelated with what's going on in the market. The beauty of having a dividend focused strategy from emerging markets is that it can be very diversified across countries. If we start from Asia, in Asia the two biggest dividend sources are Taiwan and China. Taiwan has always been a perpetually a good shareholder friendly country and all has a lot of companies which have significant dividend yield above 5%. On the other hand, China with China, the state-owned enterprises have become a big source of dividends. For instance, the Chinese banks. Those banks, uh, all, almost all of them have a 4 to 6% dividend yield or if not more. Now, if you move over to the uh, CMEA, the Latin America and those countries, you find the similar story. Russian commodity companies have a 8 to 10 percent dividend deal, quite a few of them. Now, if you also look at South African telecom companies, they also have a high dividend yield. So the bottom line is the portfolio can be very well diversified and still get you the income uh, generation or the dividends which you are looking for. Allianz Global Investors. Understand. Act.